Jacqueline Capstick has an incredible story of uh, her child. Her youngest child was born with cerebral palsy and um, her legs were bound up. And she lives in Vancouver, Canada. And the medical community told her that her daughter was not a candidate for any kind of surgery. Upon doing some research, she found a surgeon in in St. Louis, Dr. Parks, who was able to remedy this. The Canadian medical community shamed her and her daughter to even consider this surgery. Um, they, they, they shamed her to question her as to why they would be questioned. Uh, it was just a, a terrible thing. And uh, her sister, uh, Jacqueline's sister, created a GoFundMe page. It's a $100,000 uh, surgery. They went to St. Louis. They actually they performed the surgery. You could find out a little bit more about it during our conversation. But her daughter is walking now. Uh, she does CrossFit. Uh, it's just incredible. She has some other tragedy in her life, Jacqueline, and she's able to kind of turn it around. She suffered from PS. T and PSDT and uh, was able to uh, turn that around uh, and she's on this natural healing path now. Just an incredible conversation. Jacqueline Capstick. I hope you enjoy it. I know you will. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Joey Pins. People ask me, how did I lose 130 pounds? The quick answer is always discipline. I started my business, wasn't paying attention to my health, was eating too much, you know, drinking too much sweets. My daughter was born. The next thing I know, I'm pre-diabetic, I have hypertension. I knew something had to change. Discipline. I, like many of you, have faced many challenges in your career, in your family, in your life, in your faith. How did you attack them? How did you approach them? How did you solve them, hopefully? It all had to have some degree of discipline. I'm also asked, how did you found and start a tech business that lasted over 25 years? Discipline. I was committed to it, enjoyed technology, didn't enjoy some aspects of it, but knew it was necessary. Discipline. Our podcast mission, how do we use discipline to better ourselves and society? Join me, please, as I talk to interesting people and discuss how they use discipline in their family and their passion and their careers and how it helped them. Our podcast vision, growth through learning from others. Joey Pins Discipline Conversations. It will be light and serious. Join us, please. Thank you for consideration. How are you? Nice to meet you. It, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I, I, I couldn't wait to talk to you. You know, I, uh, uh, I, haven't, I haven't actually kind of cried in a while. But watching your your story uh, was oh, so, uh, and I hate for you to relive it, but I can you please, uh, your, your daughter and what happened there is just incredible. Yeah, which one? Uh, <laughs> which one are we talking about? Oh the one my. that passed away or the one that had a lifelong surgery or the, was born with? Let's go with the latter first, please. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sarah. Sarah Ray, she was um, first born, beautiful, beautiful, California looking, white blonde hair, big blue eyes, you know, lots of makeup. And <laughs> we'd always be like, Sarah, take those, you know, take down the tone. <laughs> anyway, she was, uh, she was a really amazing, just so full of love. And all she wanted was babies and a family. And so the marriage of seven years, she couldn't get pregnant. And then that kind of fell apart, I guess, just the pressures and one night stand and boom, she's pregnant. Wow. <laughs> so, and then that wasn't uh, a good thing. And she got out of that and had another one night stand and got pregnant again. So clearly it wasn't her that was, um, so it was a big mess and a uh, lot of, you know, just a lot more trauma just kept piling on for this one. And she, um, made a big court case for the, the, the first one, the two-year-old at the time. And it was coming up on the weekend and she was just, they were trying her on, you know, the antidepressants after having a baby because she had the, you know, C-sections and the oxy and the car accidents. And so it was, it was just a real tough, tough go for that one. And uh, yeah, just got the knock at the door, four o'clock in the morning 
that um, she took a, um, a Xanax. I guess she bought it off the street to help the anxiety and it had the fentanyl in it. So, but you know, she was on all these other medications for the doctors. Everybody called her a drug addict because it's so unfair, right? Because right. she was just a naive little girl, really, right? And she got in some really bad car accidents and couldn't walk for like six months. And they had her on so many medications. And, you know, she's married. She's living, you know, hour and a half away from me, right? And I'm having more babies at 40, <laughs> right? So, hmm. yeah, it was, a, it was just a big, big, just felt like it just kept you know, those just kept getting worse for her and the pressure of a mom, right? Trying, I couldn't, I couldn't fix it. So yeah, my, my sister actually had just had, um, she had throat cancer. My dad had passed and then, um, her marriage was over. Like it was just like this, you know, it's been three years of kind of just like ground zero, <laughs> hmm. but um, I guess we're really blessed if that happens to us because, you know, it wakes you up and then when you get your head cracked open a few times, then you kind of go, okay, right. This isn't going anywhere. I'm going to have to do some work to figure out what's going on here. So that's what we did, but she had a three month old baby at the time as well. And, uh, Naomi. And so we adopted her. We call her Ohm <laughs> or my little Buddha baby. So she just brought uh, so much healing for me and the girls, her sister, everybody, like me and Dean, it just, you know, little baby who smiles and I don't know. She's just starting to cry now <laughs> mm. <laughs> at almost four, right? So it was tough, but a blessing, you know? Everything seems to have that dual right? Contrast and clarity to it. But yeah. So that, uh, at the night that Sarah passed, my sister that uh, was three years older than me. So we pretty much grew up together. She helped raise me. <laughs> um, she had a, a trach tracheotomy put in because she couldn't breathe anymore. So between that and then our other little one, Kennedy, who was born uh, three months early with cerebral palsy because she was coming up the birth canal and had to come back through and they just couldn't get her to breathe, right? It was just a bit too much at two pounds. <laughs> so yeah, everything, we managed that really well. And then we got to a point where she, she grew real tall, nice long legs, but with cerebral palsy, it was under the house of, we just had it in her legs, thankfully. Um, she couldn't stand up anymore because uh, everything's spastic and so 24 seven crying and pain. And <clears throat> yeah, so it was just, everybody was falling apart. <laughs> yeah. So glad to kind of be where I am today. It's been a, it's been a tough road though. It's been a tough road. And I think um, a lot of people are starting to really have a bunch of pileups right now in in this day do you find that yeah um perhaps more than ever perhaps more than ever so you elected to get surgery for your daughter we did um we were never told about this surgery um in vancouver they told us there's five options um we were only told about four and not really knowing that there was five i guess right and so it's called uh, selective dorsal rhizotomy, SDR. We do do it in Canada, in Vancouver, but they only do this surgery um, for the, the people that they're just so spastic that they, they can't, they just can't move anymore. Like everything's so tight that they're pulled in. So they told us Kennedy wasn't a candidate um, here. The surgery, when we, my husband found this online because there was no anything. It was just more surgeries, Botox, more surgeries, just keep cut and length and cut and length and right. And um, yeah, she's a beautiful little girl. She's like a roadmap already, right? With these. And 
anyways, they didn't have anything for us. And it was very challenging because you, she's losing her light. You know, she's um, one of those little girls that touches everybody. Like they, she walks into a room and, and lights it up. And it was getting pretty dim and it was tough, right, to watch um, that because it wasn't anything. You know, six months she sat there. Now she's in a wheelchair because she can't walk anymore. And yeah, it was just, we didn't know because we were always told that that wouldn't happen, that it would only just, it would maintain and kind of just be the same. So we weren't really expecting her to grow that fast, I guess. Mm. <laughs> but um, anyways, my husband found this uh, uh Dr. Parks in St. Louis. And he said, you know, check this video out. Check it out. Anyways, I watched every surgery and the Facebook and the families and um, everybody kind of experiencing the same as us. And he revolutionized this selective dorsal rhizotomy. Um, we were shamed in Vancouver uh, an hour and a half with the head neurosurgeon in Children's Hospital with Kennedy in the room in a wheelchair telling us that we were going to paralyze her. Why are we doing this? Um, we just went because it was a lot of money to go to the U.S. from Canada. I needed to be there for a month. Um, so, you know, of course, we had just bought a house, right? So now you've used every, you know, dime that you had, right? You know, you always do that. You always kind of push it. So it was incredible. People just, my sister, who was um, uh, the one with the cancer, she had, I think it was her boys or a girlfriend, had set up one of those GoFundMe pages. Anyway, she said, well, I'm going to set up Kennedy a GoFundMe page. I was like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. And she said, no, this isn't for you. This is for Kennedy, Jackie. And I was very uncomfortable with that because, I mean, we just bought a house. Right. So I would, you know, sell your house type thing. Right. She said, she said, you know what, Jackie, I understand, but this is a good exercise for you as well as it was for her to receive. Cause you know, it's easy, really easy to give when you become an adult. Right. But it's, it's becomes more challenging to, to receive, you know, when you, already, when you have, do you know what I mean? So that was very, um, overwhelming because it, it, it was over a hundred thousand dollars people just I mean people people we didn't know um students like just like just and for Kennedy she was just like she would it, it was incredible it was absolutely to see that she didn't know these people and 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 people were supporting her and and it was such a journey um yeah, like tough one, but very, very incredible. Like, you know, the goodness that came out of every tough step along the way it has been um, really, you know, held as a gem for all of us. So, um, yeah, because, you know, when you have a, a disability like that, you, because our thoughts create our life is what I've learned through the journey of, you know, what we think about, we then kind of get some emotion to it. And then the universal energies are bringing us some of what we don't want, <laughs> because that seems to be what we're doing is thinking more about what, what's not working or not always, but when you start to pay attention to the subconscious mind and the 50, 60,000 thoughts a day, boy, oh boy, it's not, uh, they're not all good. Hmm. <laughs> it's just jabber. And it's not even true information. It's just guilting and usually beating ourselves up because, you know, should have known better, should have done better. It just, it just constant stuff that um, I think makes us sick that we're not even knowing that we're doing. So, um, and knowing that, Forgiveness is the really, really big um, for healing. My sister, um, she she had a, a tough thing with my mom, and anyway, she had a lot of resentment. And boy, oh boy, I could just really see how it was blocking her. And 
I think that just holding all of that, not enough and, you know, this and that, right. All of our stories was very lovely of her to show me the mirror of what Hmm. I'm doing because that's a reason I could see it, I believe. Right. So listen to me, I'm just blah, blah, blah. Well, (laughs) the surgery that Dr. Parks performed on your daughter, you describe it and I looked it up. It, they cut, they go into the spine and remove the frequencies to the mind that are telling it that the legs are shriveled. Is that? Yeah. So what they did was they opened up her spine and, um, they cut 19 nerves on that, that were firing, misfiring to the brain. Mm. So they put on, I guess, whatever to see what, which ones are not firing properly and they just severed them. So, Then they do the other side and there was 22 on the other side. So now she had to reconnect and relearn new pathways for her to learn, to to relearn to walk. And it was incredible. It was just quite a journey to, just to see the legs, like, you know, she'd be laying on her tummy and she'd have to like pick her leg up. Right. And the physiotherapist be like, okay. Okay. And then all of a sudden you could just see the muscle go do it and then it would connect. And now hmm. she's got a new, a new connection where her leg now, her, it was really quite something, but their theory there is that you can't be too far gone in the spasticity because you can't rehabilitate. You have to be able to rehabilitate it. And I believe that's the mis, um, misinformation that they have here is, I mean, he's done for there was 4,000 families by the, when we went and that was wow. three years ago. Right. I mean, Kenny came home, she can touch her toes. Now she can, I mean, she can do, you know, most of what every other child can now do. Wow. Right. It's wow. pretty, she's going to do life. Like, and just anyway, I'm sitting, sitting in that office, her little face is beat red and she turned that wheelchair to look at the wall as he was telling her. Because he just pretty much had taken her, um, her life, as she knew it, away. But I'd already been accepted and done all of the tests and all of the everything for St. Louis, and she was accepted as as a perfect candidate. Hmm. And I knew she was. When I watched those videos, I was like, "Oh my God, this is it! This is it! This is it!" And I always was like, "There's there's something." I knew there was going to be something, but she needed to believe it for her body, like she had to change her thoughts and her whole programming as a child for it to work as well, which, you know, that which is interesting, right? So thankfully she's quite an evolved little <laughs> child and having those conversations, she very much was understanding and like, let's go, I'm ready. Like it was her, she was like, let's go. Wow. And especially when they said, no, you can't have it. Um, yeah. Now, it, how it old was, was she when she got it? She was 11. She's 11. And did you go back to the Canadian doctors and say afterwards, after the success of this? You know, they, so, it, uh, so they wouldn't see her one surgeon wouldn't see her anymore because like when we went to book in because what well, they were mad we were going somewhere else or we were not doing what they had followed i think uh we had a physiotherapist come you know that we would go to for the city they'd come to the schools and um not like a private one but one that is paid for by the government wonderful man and i mean he was scared to death for us he came to the house twice to kind of talk us out of it oh my like God. just i go over and I, and i said to him you know do you know like do you know about he said well i just saw one boy and he was like a wet noodle and and uh but when i asked all of those questions they were all like the doctors and they were it was you mean like in a, st louis in St. Louis, Dr. Parks, and, and anyways, it was quite, it was, it, it would have been nice to have that support, but it was just a shaming, and it went on for, 
um, like a good hour in there. Like we did the physiotherapy appointment and then she came in and, and he was trying to say, you know, well, it's just, she, we need to do knee surgery now first. And I said, her knees were fine right now. We got to start with knee surgery because she, we've been left for six months in a wheelchair and then she's just deteriorating, right? Not just the light inside, but her whole body was just, you know, turning into no muscle tone. And I mean, I had to lift her in the car, out the car, in the bathroom. Right? You know, it was just not fun for the other kids too, right? Because everything is about Kennedy because it has to be. Hmm. She can't do that. She couldn't do anything for herself, right? And that that was wearing thin, I think, for the, the siblings, right? Can you get me this? Can you get me that, little princess, right? Um, go back to the community. Is this a... Is it a money thing? I mean, no, it's, it's, it's government, you know, the, it's not privatized and it would have been expensive. I, I just can't understand. Do you, well, me neither. And so what was interesting was when I said to him, he was trying to explain to me and, and I was like, okay, well, I don't really understand that. And he was not happy that I was inquiring because, you know, he's the doctor and, Anyway, so I, I looked at the physiotherapist and I said, it just doesn't make sense to me. Why are you not going to the root of the problem? Like, why are you just, it's like band-aiding. Like she's, you just keep cutting, slicing and Botoxing and every time she grows where here is something where you can kind of go right up where it's happening mm. and, and, and fix it. But she has no spasticity. She, so when we came back from St. Louis, oh, when we were leaving there, sorry, he's like, I said, well, how many of these have you done? And he said to me, well, we do about three or four a year. <laughs> and I looked at him and it was like, it was at the end of the meeting, right? And I looked at him and I go, well, here I have the winning ticket. This man's done like 4,000. So I'm going to go with him. <laughs> and then he changed his tune and he was like, well, do you want me to follow her or whatever? And I said, no, I don't like, like, I don't want to ever see you again. <laughs> I walked out of there and Thankfully, there was a bathroom around the corner because I went out and I just, I threw up. Like I was just, just, it's just a lot, right? Because. All in front of her, by the way, all in front of your daughter. All in front of her. It was horrible. And he had just taken over that position. So Dr. Parks said to me that the, the, the head surgeon or neurosurgeon for children's for years was his best friend. And I said, well, you say your name and everybody gets this. Like, what does that look? Every time I say your name, it's like a, oh. And he goes, well, I don't know why, because all of these studies and this and trials and, and uh, I said, well, I don't know. It's, but I explained to him what they said. And he said, well, I don't know. That's everything against what he does, because that's where it's dangerous, because that poor child can't move can't heal it's right they're just too spastic they're too it's too much they can't rehabilitate themselves they have to be able to do that to get to something to go again right so that's probably um if those are the ones that they're doing maybe what they're experiencing is that it's not working <laughs> because they're just don't have the length of strength anymore wow. but i'll tell you what it's um it's like, was it like a miracle, life-changing miracle gift? Of course. Do and we know what the, some of the long-term effects? I mean, is, severing those neurons have to have some long-term effect, I would think. Do we know? The nerves? Nope. Hmm. Uh, you know what? They, they had, uh, and they're, and on his Facebook family page, there's, there's um, kids there that have been, you know, 20 years and what's happening with them and, you know, I think the key wow. is, is that you have to, it's a rigorous, um, to be approved, to have it. Like you have to be, you know, da, 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 da. like, it's not, you can't be too far gone. You have to, like some of the children had never walked before. I was watching this one girl climbing, rock climbing, and she didn't look like she had ever not done that. And she was Kennedy's age. And it was like, Here's a girl that had never stood up before or walked, who now is a rock climber and, and just whole, healthy, strong. Like, it's incredible because the brain isn't misfiring anymore, right? And so if, there's, if those are severed, 
then the brain now just creates new neural pathways and like, well, you know how miraculous our bodies are, wow. right? So now she's about 14, 15 years old. Yeah. She's 14. She's 14. And she's just actually just taller than me now. Wow. Uh, Does she have to take drugs? Is there side pain? Nothing. Oh my goodness, Jackie. Nothing. I mean, we do, um, but she was never able to, to work out. Now she, um, you know, she was doing physio every other day and CrossFit and Pilates and, and, you know, when COVID hit, a lot of that kind of just, you know, some of the places were closing down for a while. And so, but that little girl will all go upstairs and she's got workout videos on and there she is working and sweating it up by herself. You know, that just, you know, because she just has that desire to, you know, I guess because she knows what the other side is like, right? To yeah, not be able to. To do that. Yeah, she's much more, yeah, she's got a, from a very different angle and appreciative and, and a gratitude, I'm sure. There's so much happiness and anger, I feel, at the same time. Obviously, the anger is pointed at the community there, at the medical community, and happiness at the, you know, it's a good ending. It's a great ending. Your sister was able to create a GoFundMe page. There's generous people donating. You're able to go down there. She was a candidate, get the surgery done, and she can live a life like this. It's just an amazing, amazing story. Yeah, you know what? It really is. And there's so many families that have no idea, just like we did it. Mm. And you know what? Like, um, I know how blessed I am because she was a slight case, right? I can't even, it makes me want to cry for the families that it's so hard physically and emotionally and mentally to have, you, 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 you can't do anything. You can't, you can't help, you can't fix it for them. Right. And I think as parents, we, that's what we think we're doing, right? We're, we're getting everything fixed up for them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. We like to think we can fix everything for our children. We like to. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And all of this has brought you to what, what you call the natural healing. Yeah. So I am, um, I have always been interested in kind of like the Wayne, uh, Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay and, um, I, uh, I don't know. I just on my own, <laughs> that was kind of my church, I guess, because hmm. I lived in a, what, what I, what I know now as a very dysfunctional family. And, um, uh, and it was, it wasn't, it wasn't a comfortable upbringing as a child for me and stuff. And so I think that stuff was food for me and then kind of a re just kind of working on that stuff and letting go of, um, you know, the fear and the abandonment and the blah, 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 whatever else there is there. So I felt that I had already done this work many times, mm. <laughs> but there I was again, face first in the mud again, going, ugh. and I guess that's what they call your shadow. You know, that it's, that it's that stuff that's down, way down that we've buried that, you know, that there's something in there. We have no idea what it is. Kind of feels like it might be dark and scary. <laughs> But there, again, the subconscious mind is, uh, likes to tell stories and, and it adds to it and they're not even real. They're not even true. Once I started watching and understanding this process, my goodness, it's really, um, it's really quite something what we do to ourselves all day long and not even, most of us aren't even aware that that's a thing, Right. It is a shame. I talk often about discipline and how uh, I feel that um, a lot of times a good solution really starts with discipline, not treating yourself poorly, you know, bringing it all together. You talk about natural healing modalities in a lot of your content. Mm -hmm. So so with Sarah passing away and having all, all the medicine and, the, and the, uh, the doctors, she was on the highest level of oxycot that our family doctor when she came back had ever seen it was kind of the, the first time that they called the and she and then all of a sudden all this was going on about the over medicating and uh, I, she just about lost her her license and rightfully so i mean it was her driver's license uh her doctor's license oh i see because my our family doctor when sarah came home um, 
he saw her, she needed some more medication, right? And uh, anyways, he looked at her and it was like, what has happened? <laughs> so she had endometriosis stage four and had a few surgeries for that. And, and then the car accidents and just on and on and on and on, right? And I think when you're down in the mud, you know, unfortunately we're in the universal law of attraction and just keeps coming at you. And hmm. I know for myself, it's like, Hey, what did I do? <laughs> just like, you know, you start to, but that's the worst question to ask yourself because now you're going to get some more of it. Like we really need to um, understand how our universe works and how the universal energies work and what we say and what we think. And, it's it's like here now, especially right now, because the energies are so fast, right? They're saying, I heard somebody talking, saying that what used to take a year to kind of manifest is now happening in a day hmm. because the energies are so fast. You can think it is here. And I really have noticed that. Like it's... Um, especially when you're struggling and you're trying to get yourself above water, right? <laughs> if you keep falling and trip that I was, I was in the rabbit hole quite a bit. So just feeling yeah. sorry for myself and that you don't know how to get out of it because That's you're right. grieving. And then there's a lifetime of unhealed traumas that apparently I needed to heal. That's why all of that happens. Right. So it gets really loud and then really loud <laughs> until we address and try and figure out what it is that is going on in there. But of course we always think it's everybody else or I do anyways. <laughs> mm. And so how do you pull, how did you pull yourself out of that? Uh, I, you know, I think uh, Joe Dispenza might have saved my life. Just, um, you know what? I came across him on uh, YouTube. I don't know, you know who he is. Cycles. Pardon? I don't know who he is. Oh my goodness. Are you going to be in for a treat? Okay. He's, he's, um, he's a leader. I'll tell you that he's. What's his name again? He is quite the leader. He is, uh, he is, was, or he's a chiropractor and an athlete. And he was doing like, I think the Ironman or something, right. Or the triathlon. And on what the is last his name? Leg, Joe Dispenza. Dispenza, okay. On the last leg of his, well, on the biking, um, he got directed through by the, you know, they're the, on the course. And this, I guess this lady, older lady, she's driving a big truck and she didn't see him and she hit him. And then she's oh dragging goodness. him. And he had, I mean, he, he was, I think, paralyzed. And all of the vertebrae were broken and being a chiropractor, he knew that he was done, right? And they wanted to put him in a body cast and they wanted to, like he would never walk again or, and for him being the person he was, he was into, um, you know, the work of going within and, and, and tapping into that natural healing mode that most of us have never been taught about. So that's what he's doing. He's out there on a grand scale and he, he explains the energy centers. He explains what they are, how they work and where you need to get when we're in the lower centers, we're still just attracting more. It's just how it's happening. So we have to lift up and get up into the, the, the solar plex heart chakra area to get ourselves up out of, so you have to tell, you can't tell the story. You can't look at the, at what's happening, even though it's like right happening in front of your face and you're like, ah! you have to just look at and find, find a new story because as soon as we do that is when we shift, but boy, that's tough when you're traumatized and you're, um, you know, you're in victim because that's, that's what we know. You know, we know that this happened to me. Right. I might have lost my daughter. I've lost my sister. I have my daughter, other daughter can't walk. I'm going for surgery there. Um, I have a new baby at 52 years old. <laughs> uh, another new baby, right? I, I keep having babies, but I couldn't have any more. So I guess it was a gift 
gift from Sarah. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, Joe Dispenza, he, he, he does these advanced courses and you're there for a week and thousands of people. And he teaches you how to meditate. He explains to you the, the pedial gland in, which is in the middle of your head, the, um, like your third eye, that's all calcified over. That's our natural pharmacy. But most hmm. of us don't have any access to it. So that's why we have to look outwards and go to a doctor to go get some drugs because our all of that natural stuff that we have, we have everything, um, serotonin and the, you know, all the big fancy names that all the feel good names, right? Everything we make and we have no access to it apparently. So he teaches you, you know, to, when you're meditating to do a breath and you pull up the breath and then he kind of gets you to just kind of push and focus at the top of the head. And what happens is it starts to, the pressure of holding that breath starts to, the crystals start to pop off. Well, you should see what was going on in that room. I mean, people are having full, I mean, they were kind of on it probably for a little while, <laughs> but they're having full body orgasms hmm. because their, their body is releasing all of the uh, serotonin and the, all of whatever, all of those good feeling kept right. right now. Right. But, um, but to watch that, there was, <laughs> there was people that came in that had had this one gentleman who had had a stroke for four or five months and he had lost his hearing and he came in in a wheelchair. Well, on the day five, he was on the outdoor where we're walk, going through the forest, walk, climbing trees and going across the planks and stuff. He got his 40% of his hearing back from day two. Like it was just, wow. <laughs> so from doing the meditation and getting out of the story and he explains what you have to do. Like there's a, there's a formula. And if you do the formula and you do this formula every day and you tap into, and you can and get out of the, the 50, 60,000 thoughts a day that we're not aware of, um, something changes, right? We get into the quantum field instead of the 3d world that we're in, we can tap into and bring to us. Um, and so he teaches you these, these different ways to do it. And, and it works like, because, you know, he said, okay, you have two boxes the first night we were there. Right. And one of them, you're going to make this simple, what you want to have. And then the other one, something that's a little bigger. Right. And you want to ask and say, show me, bring this to me in a way that I know for sure that this is, you know, the quantum field that, that I've attracted this. Right. So I was saying that we didn't get to meet Joe because there were so many people there that it was just be too much for him. Right. And I was like, well, that's not good. I got to meet Wayne Dyer. <laughs> I'm going to meet Joe Dispenza <laughs> in my little head, right. Doing my meditation. And then you just kind of release it. Right. So the next morning I'm of course running in there late <laughs> and every day the groups would be in different sections. And so I'm looking for my animal and color. And of course, my husband's there. It's right at the very front, front row, right in front of Joe. And of course, I come busting through the doors and he's up on the stage and I'm the only one standing. <laughs> and I come walking down the straight aisle and he's like, hi, comes right off the stage, shook my hand. Then I got hmm. to sit there all day. And I was like, yes, like I totally manifested that, right? Like it's, it, it was, uh, it's cool because we know that we do that when you think of somebody and they call, right? And, you know, I'm going to get a good parking spot, right? And then, oh, see, I got a good parking spot, mm. right? But if we're not asking and if we're not playing in that field, nothing's happening. We're just in the, in the, we're in the past. And he's okay. saying that most of us are not ever living in the future because we're always bringing something into our present moment. And so that never gives us that newness to rehabilitate and to, but um, yeah, there was one elderly woman, I think it was um, MS and she couldn't chew her food and she got up and the next day she'd had a group. <laughs> She's chewing and talking now. And it, it, there's, so there's something, right? We can tap into, into an energy field 
um, and create from there. And it sounds really woo woo and crazy and stuff. And, but this is all scientifically proven now. Like it's tied, like he doesn't teach or show anything because he's a doctor and all of his doctor friends, you know, gave him a hard time. And I, I think it's been a tough road, right? Because you're doing, you're teaching kind of the mystics, right? Like, you know, sure. people are like, oh yeah, go meditate, right? <laughs> like they don't believe, right? Yeah. As I talk to more people that have dealt with trauma, an overriding theme of meditation ar arrives. Uh, I, I constantly hear it from people. And so do you meditate every morning? I meditate a lot of times during the day. Yeah. Yeah. I meditate Is it assisted? every day. Pardon? Is it assisted? Uh, yes and no, both. Hmm. Both. So, um, Sometimes I just need to be quiet. And the easiest thing to do that I learned from Joe was uh, the heart math. So the brain heart coherence and super easy, right? Because all you need to do, they've, they've now found out that the heart has a brain and it has all these feelings and all of these things that we didn't know all this time till now. Like it's incredible what they're learning and what, what, they know that is scientifically backed and proven. So you can't just diss it off as that it's woo woo stuff because it's not anymore. Right. Like they're, they're changing, like they lift the energy in a room and uh, it, it's just, it's just mind blowing the goodness that comes out of for yourself and for people. And, and it just starts to grow and it's, it's really quite incredible. Hmm. Um, Do you consider yourself empathic? Oh God. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> I think so. You know, I, and I don't really fully know what empathic is, but I'm so sensitive and I feel, I feel everybody's like, I feel energies of, yeah, I wish <laughs> it's really good, but it's really tough as well because I didn't know where to, what to do with them for a long time. Like I was a hairstylist for 30 years. And so when you are with those people, you're touching them and they're talking to you and they're sharing and you care. And I would, you know, after a 10 hour day, go home and I'd be like, oh, I didn't know where, where to put it all because I didn't, you need to have some kind of tool, I believe. Right. Hmm. So there I was, <laughs> Wayne Dyer was like, go out and walk on the grass in bare feet because then the energies can go in and be absorbed into the earth. Right. I literally, I would do this stuff because I just, I could feel so full and so it's exhausting. Right. So I really, yeah, really needed to learn and understand, but there's so much because we're not taught any of this stuff. Right. You know, not. I'm not sure why we're not. It's, we need to know this stuff to navigate ourselves I think especially as we're getting older, because those stories and patterns that happen when we were children, are like they just grow and carry on and build and grow and carry on. Right. Mm. And we attract more situations with, of that same fear. It looks different. So we don't think it's the same thing, but when you get down to it, it's that, you know, that, fear inside right of I don't know, not enough or abandonment or whatever everybody's got it though so. it's always <laughs> self-doubt yeah I spoke to Jennifer Moore uh she's an empath she's out of Portland Maine and uh first conversation I've ever had with anyone who felt this way uh and it was a fascinating conversation she's written a couple of books I encourage you to take a look but yeah. as she spoke and as she she described it you give some of those sensibilities off that's why I asked. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I've kind of learned from Joe as well is that we're all broadcasting. Mm. So what we're thinking, we start to feel and then the starts and then if, and then if you have a little bit of action, then you're manifesting. Mm. But unfortunately, when we're thinking and then we're, we're upset about something and somebody did this and then you're having a feeling and you can feel your body start to tighten and stuff. 
well, we're broadcasting that to the universe. And so we're now, we, it's not trying to be mean. It's just the way it is. You're just going to get like, there's all those different, a bunch of different universal laws, but that one is so, so when people go, so you just fake, you just tell a, a fake story. That's what you do because that's how the universe works. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but if you can just close your eyes and think of, you know, how the best feeling, how you feel somewhere. And then, and you can just close your eyes and breathe into your heart, like in for five and then out for five and just stay there. Um, it, it's, it's life-changing. It will heal so many things in your body because you get this whole, um, well, coherence, yeah. brain heart coherence. And so they do like world um, meditations and stuff too. All of the, uh, like all the doctors and scientists like Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden, those are my three favorites, and Joe Dispenza, they all are doing and supporting and backing that because, you know, the power of two, right? That energy. And then there's, if there's one more than uh, that are sending love, then that'll lift 700 people. And like, it, it, it's huge, hmm. you know? Hmm. And so when we're putting out that negative energy, it's tough on our planet, it's tough on our health. And we just sit there and the only way we can get rid of it is to be accountable, like to find your part in it, right? Like, you know, what am I getting from this? <laughs> Which is a really stupid question to ask yourself, but if it's a pattern and it's happening, that's the question you got to ask, right? Am I enjoying this? Like, what am I getting out of this? Cause here I am again. Yeah, I have and to ask yourself it. why, yeah. Why are you doing yeah, it? Like, now you interview it? people that have common, uh, I've watched some of your interviews and you kind of, yeah. uh, you have great content there. Talk to me about that. Well, yeah. So there's just so many incredible, so through my journey, um, I had severe PTSD and, um, all kinds of weird things. I, I think I was in shock for months. Like it was, we went to St. Louis, I think three, four weeks after Sarah's passing as a family. Um, and Dean, and everybody stayed for a week and then I stayed on for like the month. And what I realized was I needed to, I didn't know what floor I was on. <laughs> I didn't know, like, it, it, being in shock is, I didn't know I was in shock. Like, it's just such an incredible thing what happens to us. But I had fallen um, headfirst off of one of those swings. I jumped up. I had a Caesar. I had the barbecue on. I jumped up on a swing, and it was like a three-rope um, three by Costco round swing that I had for the kids, and I loved laying in that thing. But my husband had jumped on it a few weeks prior, and it came down. So he redid the rope up top. But what had probably happened was underneath where the base was, the screws had come loose probably when it came down. But because that was covered, we didn't notice that part. So when I jumped up, it was like feet straight up. And then, of course, okay. I had a drink in my one hand and I couldn't, I couldn't um, protect the falls. So it was like head first into the cement. And it was like a wicked concussion. But I wasn't dealing with it because I didn't really know how to deal with it. And there was all this crazy stuff going on, <laughs> you know, court cases and my sister with her cancer. And like, it, it was just started to just build intensity of things that were not great, you know, that mm -hmm. were taking my focus instead of looking after myself. So I think with that concussion, you get the PTSD and the, um, what was that? The tension deficit sort. I could not finish one thing ever. I'd pick up this and I'd go to here and I still will fall into it. Like just the last few days, I'll notice that um, I'll just start to spin. And if I don't catch it right away, I can see myself, but I can't pull myself back in. And so you just start to go into anxiety and it's it's awful people are looking at you because they they're not they don't know people don't know right and and i didn't know but 
I came across this um, uh, brain, the uh, better brain. Am I going to say it right? I can't even think of the name of it. The did the podcast on it. The uh, anyways, it's listening to music, and it, the name will come to me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so you so you just go and you relax, you sit in a chair, and you put on some headphones, and um, and as you're listening to this music, you'll hear a and and it's annoying, but you can still just kind of relax and sit there, right? What happens is your brain gets tired of it. It doesn't like it. And so what happens is it reverts itself back to its primal state. Hmm. So our brain goes and heals itself back to where it used to be because it, 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 it's, it's glitching and it's not able to, to find its rhythm. I came home on my, after my fourth treatment and I, anyways, I walked in and everybody's busy doing whatever. And I made a salad, not really thinking that I was making the salad, but I was like, it, the feeling, I'll never forget it because it was like, oh, I just, I completed that, <laughs> which sounds so ridiculous, but yeah, lots wow. of dark nights of the soul. Like just, you know, it's a, uh, I feel for the veterans and the, the people that, well, at the concussions, the, the hockey players, the football players, right? Because right. I think all of that, the accumulation of traumas and head bangs and all of that is a brain injury. And so that just builds and builds and builds until your body just shuts itself down. Yeah, so that really kind good. of was what, what was going on for me. And yeah. So. Well, you're an inspiration, uh, Jackie Capstick. Everything that you've been through, uh, you're inspiring. Like I said, the story was just so incredible. And uh, the, such happiness that I feel, and I'm sure you're feeling anger at the same time with the community, with the medical community there, with your daughter, Kennedy, and you know how you're bringing it all around. You're, you're on this you know, natural healing road. It's very inspirational. Uh, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, just come to my website is the natural healing real, like the movie real R E E L. Right. My husband works in film. And so, you know, I had to kind of go with that. Right. So <laughs> I did the podcast course from the London real and, but that's yeah. like real. Right. So anyways, um, so that's kind of where I'm doing my stick on Facebook and um, just trying to learn the platforms and stuff as a, uh, I'd never had any, I wasn't the, I had to learn how to do all these, um, well, you know, uh, selfies and, yeah. and all of these things that I wasn't really understanding that, that is what I had gotten myself into by taking this course. Right. Okay. Take out your phone and do a video and talk. And then you're like, okay, okay. Now post it. No, I'm not posting that. Yeah, you gotta post it. And then you gotta do another one and you know, editing and, and it, walking through fear like that, my goodness, right? When you're already messed up, it was um, life-changing for me to, to do that. So, um, yeah, anyways, the natural healing reel. Yeah, you've got a lot of great interviews there and some you kind of there's moments where you kind of just kind of discuss things and kind of oh stream of consciousness, I'd say, where you have a kind of a topic and you just kind of talk about it and you're very captivating when you do that. Jackie, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I really enjoyed it. I'm sure everybody will. I'll include all the links in the show notes. Thanks so much and uh continued success. Good. And maybe you can come and be a guest on mine so I can find out all about you because I probably could use some of your discipline so I could get myself some, <laughs> some new patterns happening. I'd be happy to. I assure you it's not as interesting as your story, but thank you so much. Thanks. Great to meet Bye. you. Bye.